Rareware, the good old UK developer that really hit its stride in the 90s and then... Ugh. So what happened? Well, most people will just tell you that Microsoft happened. As they acquired Rareware back in September of 2002 and from that point on, didn't produce classic games at a rate anywhere near what they were doing before. Now, whether or not you hate Microsoft forever because of this, most people agree that they would have liked to see them stick with Nintendo. What's weird about it too is that apparently Nintendo never came to them with a direct offer. And it's not like Nintendo didn't appreciate them either. I mean, Shigeru Miyamoto sent them a freaking bonsai tree as a sign of thanks for all the great work they did on their consoles. Really, he did. So what made Rareware so great in the 90s? Well, they made a lot of games in the 80s, but one of the first games that really got them some attention was Battletoads. The game is infamous for its difficulty and to a lesser degree its similarity to Ninja Turtles, but it really pushed the hardware of the NES and had some interesting ideas. They really built up some trust with Nintendo and boy did it pay off for everybody when they handed them the keys to one of their biggest intellectual properties, Donkey Kong. They created the Donkey Kong Country series and one could argue it's a big part of what made Donkey Kong who he is today. I mean, before this series, the original Mario Kart had Donkey Kong Jr. instead of Donkey Kong. Can you imagine such a thing now? Donkey Kong Country was a huge success not only critically, but commercially as well. It was just one of those games that got a lot of attention at the time. The look of the game utilized silicon graphics, giving the game visuals that had people thinking it looked like it could be a next generation system. It was a huge turning of the tides in the console wars against Sega, and a huge push for Nintendo. After that, they had all the confidence in the world and just cranked out hit after hit for the Nintendo 64. So much so that a lot of people consider the N64 to be a two-horse carriage of Nintendo and Rare. With Rare matching Nintendo's output on the system and not much help coming from any other developers. And Rare wasn't just a one-trick pony either. Sorry, I don't know why I'm talking about horses so much. But anyways, they made all sorts of different games. They made racing games, shooters, and of course platformers. And they did them all well, that's the crazy thing. Usually a developer is lucky to be successful at making great games in just a single genre. Now, one knock against them is that they tended to copy other ideas. Like I said before, Battletoads was similar to Ninja Turtles, in character concept at least. Donkey Kong Country certainly wasn't the first side-scrolling mascot platformer. Banjo-Kazooie was clearly designed after Super Mario 64, Diddy Kong Racing to Mario Kart, and so on. However, they did them all so well and added their own twist and flavor to them that it's hard to complain. Plus, if you're going to take inspiration, they at least took it from some good places. Also, I do think they deserve some points for originality with Goldeneye. Sure, there were already first-person shooters, but this game was totally different with mission objectives and the way it played. Okay, now I want to talk about why Rare being a UK developer is significant. Game development in the 90s was pretty much dominated by Japanese developers. I mean, you had Nintendo, Sega, Capcom, Konami, Squaresoft, all major players. Western game developers had just not come as far along as they would in later years. So for this UK developer to come along with their quirky sense of humor and really make their mark on the industry is really impressive. A game developer like them doesn't happen without a lot of inspiration at work. The Stamper brothers who founded the company were really hard workers who constantly looked to push the envelope and I can only imagine how much magic was at work within the Rare Studios and how many young developers were inspired by them as they pushed the industry forward. Unfortunately, that industry no longer includes Rare in the same way it used to and that sucks. I mean, it's just so hard for a developer to maintain that level of greatness. The only ones who have really done it since the 90s are Nintendo and maybe Capcom? Let me know if you think any other developers deserve to be mentioned alongside them. And let me know what your experience with Rare's games is. 
That can include just telling everybody what your favorite game of theirs is. Personally, mine would have to be the Donkey Kong Country games. Those are games that I can always pop in and have a blast playing. Okay, so let everybody know your favorite in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.